Hello, welcome to the How to Apply STEP webinar. My name is Rakisa. I work in student services here at the IAS. Um, this webinar is specifically to help support anyone who wants to apply for the STEP program this year. If you'd like information on the program, um, we did have a webinar last week, which goes into detail. We've got, had the program leader, uh, Dr. Zamira, speaking about the program and about the Institute. If you're interested, if you didn't weren't able to attend and you're interested in listening to that, then you can find uh, a recording on our YouTube channel that will be available within the next few days. Um, so just to go through what the outline of today's webinar is. We'll be going through uh, the application requirements, how to make an application, uh, what the selection process is, a few frequently asked questions, and then we'll have some time at the end um, for a Q&A session. So getting straight into it, the application requirements for STEP are firstly that you have a qualification which is equivalent to a British bachelor's degree. And so that has to be deemed to be equivalent to either a first or second class degree. Um, the equivalency is determined by um, UK ENIC, which is the body that uh, is responsible for um, comparing international qualifications. Uh, to British qualifications. So there isn't an easy way um, to give a generic answer to everyone because equivalency depends on various different factors, including when you got your degree, how long you studied for, uh, what the subject is, which institution you studied in, etc. So if you have very specific questions about your qualifications, then you can email us at admissions at is.ac.uk. Uh, you'll see that email address um, in some further some slides further on in this presentation uh, if you want to contact us about your qualifications or anything else. Um, so next is most of you will need proof of English language proficiency. There are some exemptions, uh, but those are very few. Um, for example, if you are a citizen of the United States of America um, or Australia, then you would be exempt from the English language qualification. Um, but again, if you have any questions about that, email us at admissions. The vast majority of applicants will require proof of English language proficiency and it needs to be, it needs to have been obtained within the last two years before you're due to enroll. Um, next, uh, you will require four letters of reference. So for step, this needs to be two academic references, one professional um, and one support letter from um, the National Earth Program. Uh, next, we have a minimum of one year's REC teaching experience. So this isn't um, this isn't just sort of general secular teaching. It specifically has to be in a religious education centre, and it has to have been one year. Uh, next, you need to do a personal statement. Um, so there's a section in the application where you, uh, I think it's 850 words um, limit for you to talk about your your interest in the program, why you're applying, etc. Okay, so next, how to make an application. So the first thing that you need to do if you haven't applied to step before is register your details on the application portal. So you need to put in your name and your email address. And once you've once you've registered, um, you will need to verify your account uh, by uh, following the link, uh, clicking on the link that you will receive to your email, and then you can start completing the application form. Um, so you can log in and out of the portal. So it's quite a long application form. Don't feel that you need to um, do it all in one sitting. There might be some information that you need to, to get and come back and complete the application. And that's that's perfectly fine. You just save your details um, and log back in again when you're ready to continue the application. So please make sure that you have uploaded all of your documents before the application deadline, because if you've started your application, and not submitted everything, then we won't receive it. So it needs to have been submitted and you need to complete the declaration before the deadline for us to be able to consider it. Um, and next, once you've done that, please make sure that you also complete the Equal Opportunities form. Um, so this is uh, the timeline. So this is how the selection process works. So in October will be the deadline. So once all of the applications have come through, the first thing we'll do is check them for eligibility. So once we've uh, determined which applications are eligible to apply, they're then passed to um, our admissions committee. So each application is reviewed independently by three separate reviewers. So based on the outcome 
of that review will get um, a shortlist. Those candidates will complete a six week teaching practicum. Um, that would be from around December to February, um, somewhere within that window, depending on your age group. Um, at the end of that process, you will complete an entrance exam and an interview. Um, and final decisions will be made in March and the offers will be sent out to candidates, usually in early April. So we're expecting that to be completed by early April 2025. Um, so we've got a few frequently asked questions here. These are questions that candidates often ask. So the first one is, I've taken an approved English language test and my results are due after the deadline. Can I still apply? The answer to this is no. Unfortunately, we cannot consider any IELTS um, results that come in after the deadline. So you need to make sure that if you're intending on applying, that you will get your results before the deadline and that you have included those with your application. Uh, two, I'm graduating summer 2025. Can I still apply for STEP? Yes, you can. Um, but in order to consider your application, we need um, an interim transcript. That's an official transcript. Uh, which gives details of all the modules you've taken so far. Um, and then once once you, if you are successfully shortlisted and selected for STEP, then we will need to see a final transcript. So these will generally need to have been received by uh, mid-July, but if you are a past student, then we need to have received it by mid-May. Um, and three, do I need to provide qualifications below undergraduate level? No, we don't need to see any of your high school um, qualifications or brownie certificates or anything like that. We just need everything from bachelor's level and above. So everything that you've studied um, from bachelor's degree level or master's um, from that level and above, please. Nothing else. Uh, number four, will the IS consider additional documentation? No, I'm afraid not. In order to be fair to everyone, uh, we don't consider any additional documentation. So please only provide those documents that we've requested. Um, here's a link to the step FAQs. So there is a full list of FAQs. There are a lot more questions um, than this that you'll find answers to. Um, you can either follow this link or you can go to our website um, where you can find them. And as I mentioned earlier, you can also watch the previous uh, step webinar on the IS YouTube channel, which will be ready in a few days time. This, um, this webinar will also be available. This is being recorded. Um, so in a few days, this will also be uploaded to our YouTube channel. Um, this here is just a screenshot of what the application portal looks like. So for any of you who haven't uh, applied to step before and aren't familiar with it, this is what it looks like. You can see on the right hand side where it says register to apply. So um, if you're going for step, then you select step, which is in the middle. Um, if you're applying to both, then you can see that GFISH is there as well. Uh, this is another um, screenshot of the application portal. So you can also view the step FAQs from this page as well on the application portal. If you have very specific queries, then uh, we may ask you to email admissions um, if it's, if, it, if it's a very uh, particular question that you have. But otherwise, for all general questions, please, please type them in the Q&A box. Does the results need to um, so one of the questions is asking about results. I think this relates to grades. So yes, as I mentioned earlier, the qualification needs to be equivalent to either a first or second class degree. So that would be, I mean, this varies. Obviously, it's, it's hard to um, give a general answer because the equivalence of um, good grades are not the same across international qualifications. So we can only determine equivalency once you submit your uh, qualifications and then we undertake a full check. If you would like to have a look at the UCL website and um, they do have a section for international students and you can put in your country and they give a breakdown of what, what scores are required or what, what qualifications are required. So you can have a look there to get a, a rough idea um, of whether your grades might meet the requirements. Someone's asking if there's an age requirement. No. Um, due to the, the qualifications that we require, most of our students are, or all of our students are over the age of 21. Um, 
because of the qualification that you need, but there's no there's no upper age limit on applying for the program. Um, somebody's asking about the passport details. We need um, we need a photo of the a photo page of your passport. Um, somebody's asked if the arts score is expiring this December, can they apply? Um, unfortunately, you won't be able to apply using that qualification because it needs to be if you are if you are joining in September 2025 then you need your IELTS score needs to to have been taken no later than September 2023. There are many alternative tests of English. So we've got a list on our website of all the different language tests that we accept. The vast majority of candidates um, take the IELTS test. Um, but for, for a detailed list of the tests that we can accept and the grades that we would require, please have a look at our website. If someone does not have REC teaching experience, it doesn't have to be consecutive um, year of teaching. We can add up um, six months and six months, for example, um, and that would count towards one year of teaching experience. Um, somebody's asked, my 16th year of teaching education is ongoing and would finish by the time I'm in the second phase of the step application process. Would the age requirement of 10, 21 years matter? There, just to clarify that, there isn't an age requirement of 21. It's just because, because our students need to have studied to the equivalent of at least a British bachelor's level. That's why, that's why our students are over 21 years of age. Um, it might be that you're 20, but you would need to have uh, completed uh, your bachelor's. I hope that makes sense. There's not, there, there isn't an age requirement. Um, I'm graduating from my bachelor's in 2026. Do I need to apply this year or, or next? That would be next year. Um, it would be too soon for you to apply this year. If you and they said that I'm graduating, applying in October and graduating in March, that that should be fine. Then someone's asked about the references. Yes, the the fourth reference would be from the ITRA. Yes. Um, somebody's asked if I graduated a bachelor's degree in English language, do I still need to pass IELTS? Yes, you do. Um, it's a it's a requirement of the visa, so you you would need to do you would need to also take the arts test. Um, if I'm not working and I cannot provide a professional reference, should I give three academic? Um, I mean, presumably you would have teaching experience, so you can get um, a reference from um, someone where you've been teaching. Um, those graduating in 2025 will be having transcripts and not the academic qualifications. However, it's mentioned in the checklist that only transcripts will do. Okay, that's already been answered. That's fine. Um, I have a question regarding IELTS. If I have to appear in the IELTS exam, does it need to be academic? Yes, it needs to be the IELTS academic test. So. It doesn't need to be the UKVI version of IELTS, but it does need to be the IELTS academic version. Do the reference letters need to be submitted before the deadline? This is this is a good question. So technically, the references don't need to come in before the deadline because we understand that you might be waiting um, for your referee to complete the reference. However, if by the time the review begins, which will be around about a week or two after the application deadline, um, we wouldn't be able to consider your application without the references. So please bear that in mind. Um, when you so you don't need to have all the references in. If you don't have, if you, all your referees haven't responded by the deadline, still make sure that you submit the application. Otherwise, you will miss the deadline. Um, 
And what we would advise you to do is send a reminder or reach out to your referee separately, uh, requesting them to complete to complete the reference. Um, somebody's asking about their teaching experience. It doesn't matter which country uh, you have the REC teaching experience; that would that would still be considered. Um, yeah, I've already answered the question about the IELTS. It just needs to be the IELTS academic. It doesn't have to be the UKVI version. Just to make that clear. Um, someone saying their one year teaching experience will be completed by December. Um, if you could email admissions uh, with your specific dates, then uh, we can get back to you. Um, where would we find specific country requirement for eligibility? If you look on the UCL website, there's a section they have for international students and that allows you to select your country. Um, what's a question about the year of your previous applications? Um, that seems that might be a bit of a technical issue, so I'll make a note of that and have a look at the application. Um, yeah, but don't worry about that too much. Just put in the most uh, recent year that's available. If somebody's asking if they have private teaching experience, can they give the reference of a parent? Um, it would need to be somebody who has an official uh, professional address. Uh, so you would need to provide their professional email address um, as your referee. I'm not sure I understand this, this question about the IELTS online wouldn't be enough for IELTS academic. Yeah, I, I don't don't know if I understand that question, but it it's just IELTS academic that we require. We, we can't accept any other version. It does not need to be the UKVI version, but it does need to be the IELTS academic version. Is, is there any exemption? Or PG, I think that is asking if there's any exemption for PG dip in UCL if your master's degree is equivalent. No. Is the professional reference compulsory? Yes. Um, does voluntary work count? Voluntary work could, could count. Mm -hmm. It would be from the ITRA chairperson or somebody senior in the ITREB, um, who is familiar with you and who supports your application. If you've applied to step before, but remember the year is everything we can do. That's that's fine. If you if you pick the closest year that you can remember or the year that you think you applied, just include that. That will be fine. Um, what if the creature experience is quite old? Um, for the, for the question about if your teaching experience is quite old, um, can you please email us with that and uh, we'll get further details from you um, about your experience. Um, someone's asking if they need to pass IELTS if they're doing their bachelor's in English in a European country. So the answer to that question is that it depends which country. If it's a country um, which is considered by the UKVI to be um, a majority English speaking country. I think the only country in Europe that meets that requirement is the UK, though. Um, then you will be exempt, but only if you achieved the qualification no less than two years before the start of the program. So it, you'd have to have completed no later than the summer of 2023, last, so last summer. Um, somebody's asking if they have additional postgraduate. If they have an additional postgraduate degree and have completed courses such as research, are there any exemptions? No, we, there aren't any exemptions, I'm afraid, um, regardless of what qualifications you have. Um, and the professional reference means somebody who knows you in professional capacity, somewhere that you've worked, somewhere that you've had a job. If I'm getting my bachelor's degree in March, would a letter suffice? Um, unfortunately, just a letter wouldn't suffice. As I said earlier, you need to have an interim transcript. So it needs to be your official, it, not just a printout, it needs to be an official interim transcript, which details all the modules that you've taken to date. 